Hey, good morning, guys. It's Noah. Um, I woke up this morning and about we're getting ready to move into our new house this morning. We're going to be going, signing our lease at like noon and moving in. Um, we're out in the we're out in the, like the high desert. We're we're out by Roosevelt Lake in Arizona. It's beautiful out here. There's a cool little this RV park that we're at is really quiet. Most of the people that are here just like park their stuff out here. So there's like half the park is empty. There's like there's a bunch of units, but there's not people out here. It's really cool. We had a really peaceful vacation. Uh, and we enjoyed ourselves. Uh, we're going to be in Galatians 5 today. I got people that are like walking around here, walking their dogs and stuff like that. So I'm trying to keep my voice down. I hope it picks up on the mic. Um, let's pray and get into this word. Father, we come before you. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We love you. We exalt your holy name. Speak through me from the spirit, not from the flesh. We crucify the flesh. He said, the spirit and the bride say, come. Uh, give me wisdom on what to pray, Holy Spirit. I lift everybody's day up to you. I commit them to you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We stand together in agreement in that. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, God, we commit it to you. Help me to uh, encourage and uh, lift up and speak truth in Jesus' name. All right. So, listen, he was just telling me this, like, just now, when I was sitting here, he said, uh, Pizzagate, and he's like, that's what, you know, a lot of people think when they see this stuff, when they see my content and stuff, is the Pizzagate stuff. It's funny that he brought that up, because everybody called those people, you know, crazy and everything else. Did you see, they, they just made that lady uh Bramovich or whatever they say she's an artist she's she's a satanic high priestess she does art murals with her own menstruation fluid she uh she did a, a whole like performance art piece where she allowed people to abuse her for like a a time period in front of everybody they cut her up they did all kinds of nasty stuff to her she's sitting there crying you can go look at the video it's on there it's even on youtube if you want to look at it She's gross, man. They just made her, like, ambassador uh, for Canada to um, the Ukraine, okay? Uh, what's the guy? The Zelensky, okay? Zelensky, if you go look into that guy, he was doing gay porn and stuff. There's, there's videos on online you can go see about this. That guy is a disgusting man. Um, it's, like, really, like these music videos he was doing were it was so gross man like i didn't see the, the gay stuff i just saw like his music videos where they were stretched and they were in like patent leather and stuff like that it's just gross you know and these are these these people guys this is like the kind of people so people mock and they don't believe the pizza gate stuff but all that stuff was true it's all come out now. I mean, Sound of Freedom's blowing the lid on a bunch of this stuff, waking people up. But even that movie, they the people who financed that were pedophiles too, right? So, like, it's like, where do you go? Where do you go for real, accurate information? So, take this at your own discretion. I mean, you can sweep this stuff under the rug or not, but... It's the truth, right? If you think this is Pizzagate stuff, then this probably isn't the channel for you, okay? That being said, I'm going to tell you something that happened this morning. I got up. It was not, It was before sunrise. And uh, I woke up, and there was. I had a dream. It wasn't a dream. Here's, what go, here's what's going on. The Antichrist, your DNA is your access point. And we live in a, in a, in a, like, kind of like a running simulation. Okay. That's the flesh. God has written into our very DNA, the, 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 the running program that's going on. Okay. And what the Antichrist has done, they've, they've tried to infiltrate that. 
and they've jacked into it. There's been all these prophecies about a false move of the spirit and all this other stuff, like it getting into the body of Christ, right? They don't fully understand what this means, but what it means is everything that I've been t teaching about. I know a lot of you guys don't even believe it or don't understand it because it's hard to say it, but the Antichrist wanted to get into people's DNA because he can affect the programming. It's like a hive consciousness within the body of Christ. And what's happened is these things have infiltrated inside the body of Christ. Okay? So everything gets muddied when when somebody, you know, is is half in that and half in the other thing. Okay? This is why everybody started hearing, uh, like, there's people who had uh, the ability to hear into the spirit and stuff like that. And they talk about the spiritual warfare getting more heavy and stuff like that. It's an infiltration into the body of Christ. This is what they've tried to do. They've tried to hijack the program. Okay? That's literally what's happening here. I prayed on it this morning. That's what he told me to say. Is he's like, this is the simplest way to present this information. That being said... You get these people who think they're operating in the Holy Spirit, but they're not. They're not operating in the Holy Spirit. They're hearing what they think is God, but they're not hearing God. This isn't God's voice. This is why it's... Guys, he pulled so many people out of the churches. And they were the elect that it talks about in the Bible. I want to go, I want to go to church. Like, I love going to church. I love going and singing and stuff like that. But when you got like half the vessel that's tainted, you don't hear God. You don't feel God when you go into those churches. I'm sorry, but you don't. I don't. My wife doesn't. Right? And it's like, it's like somebody, it's like having a kid come in and just scream and holler the entire time when you're trying to worship God. That's what it's like in the spirit. That's what I feel when I go into churches. Okay? They've infiltrated the body of Christ. This is what's happened. It's tainted. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want prayers from, from these people either. Right? There's somebody who's praying for me saying I'm like Joseph Smith. Okay? This is literally what what they've compared me to. Joseph Smith didn't operate in miracle signs and wonders. Joseph Smith didn't have God's stamp, seal of approval, right? You're one of these people that I'm talking about. Like, I just want you to leave me and my family alone. I don't want your prayer support. I don't want anything from you. I want you to go the other way. Like, cut it off, pray for closure, whatever. But, I, I and I don't, I don't want to go... To church i don't want to go to those churches i'll go to a good church if god leads me there and he wants me to be there but i do what he says okay that being said i'm going to move on because it says down here too we're not supposed to devour one another right and i'm not trying to devour anybody i want to be left alone though i don't want soulish prayers when people think they're operating in the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning because something bangs the side of my camper. Closes a, closes a, uh, I got a little storage container on there. I kicked this thing out when I woke up from this dream. And what this dream was, was them praying for all these things in my life. Trying to, trying to help, you know. And I'm like, I woke up and I knew this wasn't the Holy Spirit. I kicked it out. And it bam, it slammed the, the side of the, the Montana, right? Like, this is what I go through, right? You're not operating in the Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. You got the beast inside of you. You hear his voice, and he's and he tries to be so similar to Jesus because he's trying to deceive people, okay? That's how this works. You're going to see it very soon that that's what's going on. That being said, let's move on. All right. <laughs> Galatians 5, um, you know, one is uh, entanglement. So there's something you can have called like a spiritual entanglement. It's like uh, it's being no yoked together right now. So listen, like I, when I woke up this morning, those people, they watched some of my videos and stuff like that. 
And I genuinely think they're trying to help, but I don't want their help. I don't want anything from you. I just want you to go away. So right now I break every entanglement with those people, with the blood of Jesus, every yoke of bondage, every entanglement in our lives. We break it off. We bind and break it off with the blood of Jesus. We fall out of agreement with all of those things in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, if you go to two, they got like off-roader vehicles and stuff like that. If you go to two, it says, uh, indeed I, Paul, say that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. Paul is just talking about trying to do it on your own strength, okay? And that's like trying to keep rules and laws and all this other stuff, right? That like, that's not the way. The way is by faith. You have to be repentant. Repentance is good. But it's not about rules you keep. But here's the thing. If people are genuinely seeking the Lord, he brings them back on. Like, he keeps bringing them back on track, back on track. If I get off on something one way or the other, the Lord brings me back. He's like, back on track here, you know? And, like, we got to do a little cleanup session. But... There's people who genuinely don't want God. He's been he's he he's been warning people about this stuff for a really long time and they don't listen, right? They don't trust their discernment. They think that they got to listen to they want somebody else to do it for them or think for them or whatever. And that's not this walk. This walk is walking with God, okay? Every man who becomes circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole law. That's just about keeping the law, right? It says, like, you're in covenant by faith now. You have be become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. Last night I was watching this video about a guy from Australia. He was doing deliverance work, and I'm watching it, and I'm just like, I'm like, God, I don't agree with a lot of this stuff. I said, but I want to be out of the way. I want to know your will on a lot of this stuff. I'm like, because this is like garbage. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with a lot, of, like a lot of the deliverance stuff. And he's like, you know, there's value in some of it, but a lot of it is total nonsense. And here's why. Their spirit, get out of here. Lord Jesus rebukes you. Go. It's like an all black bee. That was weird. There was like no other markings on it. Um, deliverance work if... How do I say this? There are spirits that will get people to just chase around. It's like a, a spirit called chase, right? So you get these people who will have like... Uh, they get they get off on like seeing people manifest and having that power and stuff like that. Stinking bee? What the heck? Go! <laughs> like, what the heck, dude? Uh, okay, we took care of that bee. Um, listen, I'm not going into this, like, this Galatians 5 teaching, but this isn't what's really on my heart today. I, I, don't, I don't really feel led to share this. What I... There's good stuff in here that I want to cover, but I put all that stuff in there uh, in this video because I'm not here for any of those people. I'm not here for that. I'm not like, you know what he told me last night? I said, why? Like, I have, I used to have a neighbor who lived right next to me, right? Uh, at this old house. And she was this older woman. She wasn't like old, old. She was like my mom's age. And she was religious, okay? And I could feel the religious devil coming in whenever this lady would come to town. Like, I would, I would just know when this lady was coming to town because of this religious spirit that she had. She heard me and my wife fighting like the first time she ever came up she didn't live in this house she she only lived there part of the time right and uh what's crazy is like the enemy came in like a flood when this lady came up for this very reason because she was using this the enemy was using this lady to like sabotage us to pray against us 
interfere with us, all this other stuff. And she thinks she's better than everybody. That's what the Lord told me. He's like, she thinks she's better than everybody. Like, like she doesn't, like, she, she's wicked. Okay, this is the estranged from Christ thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if this lady found out that I had a channel and interferes. I think she does. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what the Lord told me. <laughs> he said, you know she does, Noah. <laughs> yeah, she does. I hope she sees this. Here's the thing. She went around and gossiped to everybody and tried to interfere and come in like she was going to like save my wife or something because she heard me and my wife yelling and screaming or whatever that one time, right? My wife was like super pregnant and she was being irrational. My wife will even tell you this with what was going on, but we have regular people issues, right? There was no, there's no violence or anything like that. There was elevated voices. Husbands and wives fight sometimes. This just happens. Like if you think you're better and like you're like super Christian 2.0 and you're at church and like, like you're, you know, like your butt doesn't stink. Guess what it does? It does. It's really stinky. <laughs> like everybody stinks. And until you like come off your high horse and like realize that that like we all have issues right i know a little thing about you i know several things about you what you're actually doing is projecting stuff from your own life onto onto me and my wife that's what that lady did right but these are the individuals who are estranged from christ because they think that they got it on their own or, or or through some some kind of works that they can establish more righteousness it's not and these are the same kind of people that hate me because God chose me to be the vessel that he has to show his glory. Okay? Like they deserve it more than me because they try so hard or something. And that's not it. I don't know why. I don't know why God chose me to do whatever he's done. Right? I'm thankful. But I go through a lot. I go, I go through the dirt. Like it's hard. Like I understand when Paul talks about being an ambassador in chains. Most of you guys would, you wouldn't be able to handle it. Okay. So like there's a, there's a payoff, there's a trade-off, but I'm okay with that. Like that's what my lot in life is. It's acceptance, right? But he was showing me this last night cause I was so frustrated. I'm like, well, why, like, why are you not granting me victory in certain areas like this? Like with, with like, uh, why did you let that lady come in here and run her mouth and talk to the other neighbors and like do all this other stuff, Lord? Like, why did you do that? And he said to keep you humble because you're not going after those type of people. He said, that's not who you're here for. He's like, he's like, let them be. They, they got their little church games. They got all, he's like, how are you going to go after the lost sheep? If you're, if, if, if you're perfect. Okay. That's why he's allowed that. Like, me and my wife get so frustrated. Here's the other thing. Like, we hate it. Like, we we love each other. I love my wife. She's so sweet. She's, a, she's an awesome wife. You know? And it's like the, and the, the, the flood comes in, and it's like, oh, man. And we just, we're getting victory in these areas. But this is the truth, guys. This is how it happens, right? And whatever it is, whatever this affliction is that you're dealing with, praise be to God that it's his grace. Go, go read Galatians 5. It's his grace. If there's more work or something like that that I can do, I'd like I'm, I'm doing it. Like I fast two days a week no matter what. I, just, I do seven-day fasts all the time. I just got done with one. I read the Bible every day. Um I don't want a fellowship in, in most churches because they're corrupt, okay? And they got a bunch of people with what I just talked about. The beast is inside the body of Christ. It's there. And it's noisy. I don't want to be involved with that. You know, I. if this thing, what is this about? Like, what are we here for? Like, what what are you here for? What are you, what are you following God for? Are you following God so that you're, a better individual so that you're repentant and so that you can help other people if that's the case 
why do you go to church? Like, and I'm not saying church is a bad thing. It might be a good thing for you, but why do you go to church? Do you go to church to be a better person and help people? How about getting in your Bible, hitting your knees and fasting and, and seeking the Lord with your whole heart? How about, how about having a relationship with God to the point where, you know, if he tells you to go left, go left and you go find somebody who needs help somewhere, be led by the spirit. Like it talks about in here. That's the deal. You right. Like that's the whole deal. The whole deal is to, to serve, to be, to be a, a steward of God, what God has granted you. So the church stuff is just, it, it's literally just to fellowship, to be around the bride. That's it. It's like going to a, to a family reunion, but they don't treat it like that in churches. They treat it like that's the only, like, that's what it's there for. And it's wrong, right? We have some personal accountability day and night to do the deal on our own. This is why the great, he, he you know what he told me yesterday? The great falling away is going to happen next. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be so bad. And I believe that's why he's pulled my wife and I and so many other people that I've looked into or that I've seen online and stuff like that. That's why he pulled them out of the churches. Because when the great falling away happens, people are going to betray each other. They're going to do all this. And he allowed these people to get done like this for the last couple years so that when it gets really bad, they're already prepped. They're, they've already got their dukes up. They've already got their guard up. And they don't allow these people to wreck them and ruin their faith. Okay? Everybody has betrayed me in my life. And... I love them, I bless them and everything else, but I don't need them. I don't. I mean, my wife, my kids, and God. God first, right? That's how it is. Like, if you're not there, you should try to get there because it's going to get real bad. Real bad, real ugly. This is what's coming, right? And the men and women you thought were something, they're not going to be anything. And the men and women that you look down upon and turn your nose up at and everything else. They're going to be the ones that are something. Okay, that's, a, that's just how it works. You know, like the people with a backbone. So take this stuff to the Lord. There's a bunch of good stuff in Galatians 5. Go read it. Um, one thing I do want to show you is when, when you go down to 19 through 21, it lists all the bad things, right? When you read those things, anytime you come across something like that in scripture, you say, okay, Lord, forgive me for any of these things. I cast off da, 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 da. And then when it says 22, those are the fruit of the spirit. Then you say, father, fill me up with this. And then you ask God to fill you to overflowing with those things. That's how you read scripture. That's how it works. Go do that. Read Galatians 5. It's a good one. God bless you guys. Have a good day.